I'm Melinda Louis, a fashion designer based in Kuala Lumpur, born and raised in Kuala Lumpur as well, from Cheras. And uh, I was born in 1973. Hmm, I'm not that young, but yes, I feel really young because I have a lot of energy to, to work and do what I love doing. And I was basically taught to help the family business when I was very young. So when I reached teenage, I I moved back to my parents' house and um, actually even before that, uh, at about, I remember at about 10 years old, every, every school holiday we will need to be in the factory helping sewing, cutting, trimming or anything that we can learn. So I actually left the family business. When I left the family business, my parents didn't talk to me for a few years. It was. It was not easy, it was tough because I know I was working very hard, I was trying to achieve what I want to, not achieve but I was trying to, to challenge myself. But I guess I can understand why they didn't understand at the time. And my grandma was the only one, wow, yes, go. I give you 3,000 ringgit, go buy your own machine. And I did, I bought the first machine from China was 1000 plus. I share with a designer friend, Daniel Chu. At the time, people kind of heard my name and when I came back, wow, you know, it's a big news, you know, the, the girl who got the scholarship came back, you know, graduated, you know, la, let's put her in the limelight, that kind of thing. I, I was quite, it was quite amazing. Like every month, you will see me in every single magazine or newspaper. Was, I, I think I was really lucky. So this time, I went to Borneo because we are supporting some of these um, artisan and the weavers. We, I learned so much. I learned that Malaysia has amazing craftsmen, amazing people that are hidden away. We need to uh, we need to acknowledge these people. We need to know that. Your beautiful songket or your beautiful song that something is being done, you know, uh, by these people. Nama saya, nama penuh saya Muhammad Kairi bin Ibrahim. Uh, tapi dalam industri, even bukan dalam industri pun dari sekolah pun sebenarnya dah dikenali sebagai. Uh, memang kawan keluarga dan kawan-kawan panggil saya AI. Um, saya berumur 46 tahun. Um, kerjaya saya, saya sekarang ni um, seorang pengarah animasi di studio saya yang bernama Creativity Tune Studio. Saya dah berada dalam industri um, sejak uh, 1965, habis sekolah. Zaman saya, um, zaman tanda cats zaman transformer dulu transformer dulu 80s transformer 94 saya SPM 95 tu dalam 95 95 tu saya ada interview ujang memang masa tu dia buat road tour memang untuk animasi hmm. hari tu juga jadi kita balik tu terus beritahu mak ayah cakap eh dapat kerja kat KL bercakap tentang uh, Usop Sontorian Usop Sontorian adalah animasi pertama TV siri dan bila keluar nama kita dekat TV tahun 1965 tu juga penghujung 95 kita bangga lah, kita rasa macam, ui, nama aku dah dalam end credit waktu tu lah, hmm. uh, kan? Uh, even though gaji tak sebesar mana, 
but Usuk Sunturan yes again uh, dia animasi TV pet, uh, siri yang pertama di Malaysia betul walaupun saya tak lama tapi memori Usuk Sunturan tu memang memang seronok lah sebab kita semua muda dekat kampung dan uh, tu cara ujang dia dia rapatkan uh, silaturahim antara kita lah uh, 2009 tu ada grant yang keluar dan saya apply lah uh, grant pertandingan animasi lah di MDEC okay. tujuan MDEC adalah untuk develop the industry so jadi saya 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 memang time tu saya freelance pun dan uh, dan saya terus um, set up studio Creative Tune waktu tu tu 2010 dan terhasilnya um, projek TV siri saya waktu tu lah saya punya The First Baby um, Zero Hero I call it as a Zero Hero sebab saya ambil daripada apa yang saya cipta ataupun saya lalui bersama Inspedia from the zero company to the hero company so saya gunakan uh, elemen yang sama untuk saya develop satu siri Zero Hero waktu tu Saya Abdul Rahman bin Osman, nama komersial orang panggil uh, Mambai lah, kan? So uh, saya dilahirkan di uh, Johor Bahru. Mambai tu memang saya dapat daripada sekolah dulu. Uh, macam saya cakap lah, muka macam mix sikit kan? Bai tu, bai tu dengan Arab sikit lah. So dia macam cakap, eh, bye 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 bye. Uh, so dan kecil-kecil pun saya selalu tengok orang jual roti kan. Bye bye. Ah so melekatlah nama tu. So member semua panggil daripada sekolah. So melekat sampai sampai sekarang lah. Man bye. So band Thunder Dome ni masa tu saya kid uh, arwah Samad Lefender, a uh, Yim Popai main bass and then arwah Mandayak. So kita main every Sunday lah main main. Jadi rocker ada bisa semua rambut sikit dulu ada rambut lah. Bok buku nyanyi semua kan. Gaji sebulan saya dapat dalam RM370 something like that. Sebulan lah. Pasal playing every Sunday je kan. So kita tak payah bayar sewa pasal kita numpang rumah Din. Din search kan. So I think dalam setahun kot kita main kontrak itu. So so after that I berhenti, I kerja Holiday Inn, JB. Naik, naik, apa, naik pangkat sikit lah. Kan ada experience as a waiter. So I apply for Holiday Inn, JB as a waiter juga. So I kerja. Holiday Inn, I think dalam I think 4-5 years juga I kerja situ. So, kita pakai nama Gersang. Ha, masa tu kita dah start pakai nama Gersang. Pasal nama Gersang dulu sebenarnya band tu adalah band uh, arwah Samad. Jadi, legasi dia dia tak sambung tau. So, saya cakap, eh nama Gersang ni band ni. Kan? Okay, kita pakai nama Gersang lah. So, kita masuk rock festival. Competition. Masuk-masuk, masuk menang. Masa tu line up saya macam musician ni dia macam tukar baju tau. Sekejap dia ni main dengan Benny, sekejap dia ni you know kan. So kita masuk rock festival lah. Masuk 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 kita menang. Malaysia. Dekat JB. Pertandingan rock apa benda lah. Kan rock kapak benda rock panggil lah. So kita menang. So lagu Suratan Takdir tu memang hit lah masa tu. Masih aku terasa Suratan Takdir memang boom. Even second album pun Suratan Takdir pun memang boom lah kan. Masa, masa kalau dengar pun uh, Mina-Mina Polis ke Mina Jururawat tengah masak macam Ah mambai. Kesukaran, you know, akan ku simpan, you know, macam letak senduk lah, macam hey, you, tengok Mumbai lah, tengok Mumbai. So, mata tu memang tengah popular lah. Kita kira kita ni macam apa orang cakap uh, time tu macam kalau boy band dipanggil apa uh, New Kids on the Block lah. Ha, dulu. Sekarang you, budak-budak baru nak apa? Sekarang budak-budak uh, budak-budak baru nak apa lah kalau ni. Dulu kita ni bergesang ni kita consider New Kids on the Block. Kita pergi mana je perempuan tu, ah, bukan bawa, bukan bawa. Pergi Singapura, pergi Brunei, penuh lah. Airport pun penuh. You know that kind of, kita dah rasa. 80, 88 year kan masa tu. So, every day dia main dekat Arab Cafe tu. Time to search, main. Amy, masa tu line up dia, Amy, uh, Yan, uh, gitaris Man Kidal. So, drama dia orang, arwah Yazid lah. So, dia orang for peace dengan Din. 
Anglican Church lah masa tu So every Sunday tak ada band So we supposed to play every Sunday So I pun naik lah, naik duduk rumah dorang lah Rumah Search, I dengan kids semua I think the one collaboration that started That kicked me off You know, to understand how powerful collaborations are Was my collaboration with Amy Search When I was making music back in the days, I always told myself, how do you become an household name? You know? And it's not going to be easy if you're going to take a step-by-step -step process. And at that time, I knew that I've taken many step-by-step -step processes and I need to have that one giant leap that will be able to introduce me to Malaysian. I was no one, you know, I was, I was nothing in the music industry in the beginning. But I knew if I really made a magic happen and made this magic happen correctly with the right person, something can, something big would happen, right? I percaya, pasal macam saya cakap tadi, I ada sense yang I boleh tahu ni akan terjadi, ni Allah bagilah kan. Tapi I tak beritahu orang idea, saya cakap okay. I am Sasi the Don. Uh, I'm a Malaysian, proud to be one. I'm a singer, producer, executive producer, and an entrepreneur in a very humble way. And uh, I make things happen. I don't wait for things to happen. During my engineering days, I was already recording my album, music, while in university as a student. And uh, of course, it is not a, a standard practice among Malaysians. I mean, you know, something that it's not going to be encouraged by your parents if they find out. But I, you know, I just went through all the odds and I just did what I had to do. You know, and I found my love in the creative space and I found an opportunity for me in the creative space. The music industry back then was very different from what it is now. So back in the days, uh, there was more um, effort from all parties involved in the business, especially the artists, uh, producers, label owners, you know. And uh, moving forward, from there, uh, the way we promote music back then was also a bit traditional because there's nothing much you can do on MySpace and Friendster. Well, it's just a bit of a shout out here and there, but you still had to do the traditional way like, you know, radio was important, um, TV was very important, interviews with magazine, prints, newspaper, it's all very important. But today, I think it has just totally taken a 360 turn or even more than 360. So with our time, it's so much more difficult than now. Now, easy. Live shows, you know, Instagram, live stream, uh, Facebook, right away you will see, right? Those days, we don't have those. We have to do a lot of shows and they don't publish right away, right? Magazine will take two months. Today, everything is just online, right? We, are live, we come into an era where music, if it's good, it's easily going to the other side of the earth, of the globe, right? And people easily pick it up. You know, everything is now like word of mouth online. So people spread the word, things just spread so fast. We don't have like instant, you know? It's not like Instagram, you know? Not instant, you know? Everything must be, it's a lot of hard work. We have to do a lot of shows to get our name there. And we don't get to like Google or search anything. Everything is really purely, you know, you have to learn from the hard way. It's, it's different, you know. Like I see artists pushing three, four videos in one go. I'm talking about international artists, right? So, I mean, we can't do this here, but because Malaysia, I think uh, we are a bit more conservative uh, in the way we promote our music. So we take one thing at a time. I think moving forward, Malaysia has also progressed in many areas. You know, I, I believe we have progressed in, in, in the way we make films, you know, the way we make music. I think we have also got a lot of award-winning chefs and restaurants, brands that have come out of Malaysia. And I think one of the biggest success that we have achieved is definitely sports. Shalin Skifli. Uh, I'm a professional bowler. I was uh, a national athlete, elite bowling athlete, uh, 
Olympics until 2021. I represented the country since I was 13 years old up to uh, when I was 43. Yeah, I think. <laughs> you lose count after 25. Anyway, so um, uh, I was discovered when I uh, won uh, Sukma gold. Uh, two golds, I think. Two golds, two silver and one bronze or something like that in the Joho Sukma. So that was when C. Allen, uh, who was the national coach at that time, uh, discovered me and brought me in to the national youth program and also the uh, national team, which was the adult team. So yeah, so I was very blessed to have like very, really supportive parents, and they always said, "No, go and do what you want. You know, you're not going to be here long and stuff like that." So um, you won't have, uh, you won't know, you know, uh, rather like ten years down the line, you'll still be as good and whatnot. So just go and do your best. Yeah. Uh, for my dad, it was the other way around. He told me like, you can study at any age. Even when you're 30, you're 50, you can study, you can take your degree and whatnot. But for your time span to be able to compete and, and be good in sports, it's very limited. There's only like, only a few years. So he said, just go and like bowl and like compete. And like, if you really want, uh, to be a good athlete, be a world champion, make sure uh, you be the best at it. So I trained really hard. Uh, at that time, uh, it was very rare for a bowler as young as me to be in the team because most of my teammates were a lot older than me uh, in their mid 30s, uh, yeah, to 40s, yeah. Uh, uh, so I was a lot younger. Uh, I think I was the youngest then. Uh, and up to when I retired in 2021, I was the oldest in the team. When I see how uh, athletes uh, treat, are treated here, especially like bowling in particular because I'm a bowler, compared to the professional bowlers in the States, the amount of respect and uh, admiration and appreciation, appreciation we get here, not only from the fans but also from the government, from the media and, and so on, is, is fantastic compared to what they get there. There's quite a lot like small little things that, that makes us like Malaysians interesting, you know. Besides us loving food. <laughs> to be honest, we are very lucky. And the kind of food we have, people do not understand. But once they try, they are like, wow, it's so rich. You know, we are so rich, even though we don't have a lot of money, but we are rich with culture, with knowledges, with food, you know, with flavors. And I think Malaysian chef can cook so much better than a lot of other chefs in the world. Just Kirat Kaur. Uh, I run a restaurant called Tasty Chapati here in Kuala Lumpur. Um, I'm originally from Johor, Kelwang Johor. Uh, I was born and bred there. I actually did a bachelor's degree in uh, IT, majoring in data communication. And I worked for many years as an engineer, as a telecommunication engineer, uh, in companies like Alcatel Lucent. Uh, Nokia Siemens, Exiata and so on. This, this restaurant is actually started by my husband and his, uh, a few of his brothers, uh, sort of like, you know, cousin brothers and friends and so on. So we had this one outlet in Jalanipo and he said, why don't you join this restaurant and, and you know, help out a bit because we need help. Because it was to do with food and, and it was interesting because as I worked with the chefs and as I worked with uh, all these different people from food background, um, it, it was interesting because I realized that it's not just about ingredients, it's about the science of, of you know, how things are cooked, it's about the attitude that you bring to the kitchen and so on. So it really got onto me and then I realized that actually I have this passion for food. commercial kitchens when I joined this teacher party, I realized that I probably started enjoying it very much because it went back to a, a little bit of my memories as a child, 
you know, as a child because a lot of the values that my mum taught me came from the kitchen. Um, don't sauté the onions with so much of impatience, you will not take out the sweetness out of it, for example. Or don't press the chapati so hard, press it with some love. And I used to wonder, what is love? <laughs> How can you have love for chapati on, on, the, you know, on the pan? And then I realised that it's do it with passion and you know, it will fluff well and what you serve on the dining table will, will turn out you know, magical. <laughs> I don't, I don't want Tasty Chapati to be known for you know, the best biryani in town or the best chapati, serving the best chapati in Malaysia. I want, I want that anyone who walks in Tasty Chapati is able to enjoy uh, the food despite the different ethnicity. The whole idea here was the enjoyment of an experience for people, something that can excite you, something that can... I wanted to make sure that when people left this particular event, um, they can't wait for the next one, you know, and I've, I've found a lot of joy in that. My name is Iqbal Amir. I am the group CEO and founder of the Livescape Group. We are a company that uh, is based in live entertainment. Um, we operate in Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia. We've been around for 12 years now. Our, our company Livescape was actually not meant to be Livescape, actually it was meant to be I can't even remember. It was supposed. To, I think it was supposed to be Escape, and then when we went to the registration to register the company, Escape dah ambil lah. You know, you can cari lain. You know, and then we just live and Escape lah. So got live event, boleh Escape, live Escape. Uh, then we just, so we just came up with that. Then signed it up, uh, and we operated out of a room that we rented of a house. So then from there we started doing events uh, slowly, slowly, slowly. And now to date, I think we've done about, about 700 events from now and then we've, we've grown the company since. So we actually did a lot of research in showing how an event in terms of the economic multiple is far greater than infrastructure or like theme parks and stuff like that. So you, you spend so much money on a theme park, but the, the return is going to come like 10, 15, 20 years from now. But if you take 3 million bucks and you invest in a, in, in, in a mass scale event, the economic impact on multiple is, is, a, is, is very, very good for the Malaysian uh, economy. So we came up with that plan. I went to Tourism Malaysia, they rejected me. So I sat outside for three days with that paper until they were angry and they came and said, who are you? Like, why are you are still here? You don't have an appointment. I said, I want to meet someone and then, and then I went in and I got a deal done. You know, I got a deal done. There's great beauty in turning a car park, an empty car park or an empty piece of land and then envisioning something in your head or a venue and then seeing it come to life and then seeing people walk away from it having a great time. The first time that I saw Derek Greta performing on stage with his uh, latest hit singles called Titanium, I was yeah. sassarable, I was just standing there and just enjoying the music and I really like, appreciate like, how music can actually change the lives of people around us. And then that's the moment that I feel like I want to pursue my passion in more in music and then get into deeper in doing music, DJing and stuff, exploring more about music. Hi everyone, I'm Alexis Grace. I'm a Malaysia DJ and then I was born in 1992 in a small town at Taiping Perak. Uh, like most Malaysians, I came from a very humble beginning and then I only had the access to the public education and then which was an elementary and a secondary school. And then after high school, I enrolled myself in fashion designing but it just wasn't the stars. So also due to lack of opportunities during that time, that's why I dropped out. And then it was all started when I was just um, joined a school choir. Okay, I still remember that feeling bliss and escape when I was performing with my group on stage. 
And then at that moment, I was like, wow, you know, it just feels so good to perform and being so expressive. So as I can remember, my first gig was in Luna Bar. And then I wasn't prepared. And then I kind of embarrassed myself because I just went two classes before I go to Luna Bar perform. And then, uh, but it's okay, you know, I mean like it's experience and this never stopped me from improving myself. So along the way, uh, when, doing, when I was doing these small shows or doing concerts, I met a lot of uh, people in the creative industry, people in events, you know. And we actually have a lot of talent. We have very, very good talent. But the opportunity seems to have just been like that. If we don't give chances to our Buddha, who, who's going to appreciate us? My end game, I really wanted to see how can I grow Malaysia industry, especially for entertainment line. Like we say that there's not no union, there's no law, there's a lot of grey area. I really hope before I leave the world, at least there's some settlement and there are something we have done. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Suwinsi. I'm currently an associate professor in UITM and also an artist, actress and composer and producer. So I was being born in Selangor, Petaling Jaya. Then I went to UK in 2005 for my law degree. And then I came back in the end of 2007. Then 2008, I graduated from my MBA. And 2008, I won Miss World Malaysia. Then 2010, I started in my first drama. <laughs> so in 2010, end of 2010, I enrolled in my, uh, my first PhD. Then 2012, I did MasterChef. I came from a very traditional family, so where my dad would tell me, get married early and don't need to study so high. So I went opposite. So my, my, my two brothers are helping my dad. So all, all family business, yeah. In my heart, I, I keep telling myself, never get, ever get into family business because I, I don't, I really seen a lot of politics stuff. I hate it. I want people to see me as a person, as a crazy doctor who always experiment and always want to challenge yourself. Being in Malaysian industry is the only industry I see so many languages all we boli rojak together, right? And you see all this diversity. You know? And then when you're in the production and stuff, we help each other. You know, I, I like those things. And I like to work with different races. You know, where can you see all different colours? Overseas, you only see white or Asian. You know, here is the best thing is like, oh, you go around and then suddenly you change to Chinese, and then suddenly change to English, you know? That's the beauty part of Malaysia and the industry as well. I believe there's so many talented people. It's just that we need to change and shift some direction towards a better direction, I would say. Yeah, I've been called uh, the teddy bear doctor since actually for the past uh, seven to eight years. I used to have a lot of teddy bears in the car. I used to give teddy bears to those so underprivileged children who are on the streets or even orphanage homes. Uh, me and my friends used to bring a lot of teddy bears. And there was this one time when I was having my charity clinic for the homeless. Uh, this urban poor kid from a distance, she shouted, Hey, the Dr. Teddy Bear is here. And Dr. Teddy Bear sudah datang. And actually that was how and there happened to be a reporter at site on that day and she wrote an article saying that the uh, teddy bear doctor is here and since then the name was stuck with me. For me, I feel that teddy bear is something that, every, uh, that can make everyone smile, uh, okay, be it a, a child or even an adult, when you give them a teddy bear, definitely the first thing they'll do is they'll hug the teddy bear, say so cute and there'll be a smile. I had always wanted to make people happy, I always wanted to make people smile and so this is the closest thing. And I used to weigh a very, uh, I was 155 kilos, so I was uh, always hugged by people. Uh, so, and so I was myself a teddy bear that then maybe I could say also. La. So it was something very attached uh, to me and, and I wanted to share it to others too. Mm -hmm. Me and my siblings, we actually grew up in that uh, clinic. Okay, so. The clinic was downstairs and we were living upstairs, so whatever studying and our homework was all done in front of my father and also while he was treating uh, the patients. So, and also there is this saying once uh, in Indian families, if a father or mother is a doctor, the children automatically have to become a doctor. Also. Apart from our Teddy Mobile Clinic, which is run uh, especially in different parts of Malaysia, uh, we also help other NGOs in different countries, especially uh, this particular NGO, which is very close uh, to our heart, is uh, Touch Alive in Siem Reap, uh, Cambodia.
Okay, I've uh, I've realized that actually um, even in Mal Malaysia, there are a lot of uh, different categories of people. Some who are really very well to do, and some those who have almost nothing with them. Okay, especially to the homeless people. Okay, most people have this perception that the homeless people are either uh, drug, ad drug addicts or criminals, but it's actually not. It's only when you start talking with them, we realize that each one of them have a different story to say. Okay. So I feel that the first thing you have to do for a Malaysian to see uh, to help another Malaysian is treat the other person the uh, same as us. Do not see race or do not see color. See them as a Malaysian. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm not saying that you shouldn't help foreigners. Okay. Foreigners who need help, you do need to help them. But at the same time, you have to be care more caring towards our Malaysian friends. Okay. Uh, I would say that my NGO is actually a very small NGO, okay, and we cannot sustain if we do not have help from bigger parties, especially our government. We do need support from our government to continue doing that, what we are doing. Okay, see, you, you would have seen many NGOs being formed and after probably a few months or one or two years, uh, they break down because they are either um, being not being supported or they do not have the resources to help. So, what I really wish to see is government and NGOs working together to help those who are really in need. Um, of course, there are a lot of room for improvement, definitely for Malaysian, right? Uh, because I always think that even you are proud, but to be more, you know, we say that much more prouder than it was and stuff, you have to keep adding stuff, you mm. know. Kita tak boleh shock sendiri je. Huh? I don't want to check out, okay, I'm very proud of Malaysian and stuff, we, we look down on others and stuff. We have to learn from other countries. We, we can't just, you know, uh, beat around the bushes or in our own river. Um, my dad is the kind of person who emphasizes on education. There is nothing more important than education for him. So that made us, you know, very studious and everything was about going back to the room and revising your work. I think Malaysia can do better for Malaysia in, in uniting us in, in, in humanity or, you know, in a lot of like education sphere or in job scope as well, you know. I hope that, you know, one day you can see that, you know, entertainment thing grow and the youngster, all of us really can survive with entertainment line. Malaysia is really awesome because uh, we have a great bunch of, uh, uh, how to say, very visionary people. You know, I think this is because, you know, it's. I think it's in the it's in the DNA of, of Malaysians. You know, I always believe that you know we are a bunch of people who don't easily give up. You know, I've I've seen a lot of people who have gone through, who have come to worse points if their life and going through so much struggle, and somehow you know, they know how to turn it around by just putting the right effort, the right networking, you know, do things with the right people. And coming to that, that's where, you know, to me, one of the fun things that I have being a Malaysian till date is about being able to work with so many creative people. Macam Piramli cakap lah, irama dan lagu tak boleh dipisahkan. Betul? Kan? Cuba bayangkan hidup kita ni tak ada TV, tak ada radio. Apa rasa diri kita? Tak best lah. Mesti nak ada muzik sikit. Macam, 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 macam. So, itu, itu... Benda tu yang akan meresap dalam jiwa kita dan dan apa hiburkan hati kita. Kan? I think nowadays children are brilliant, you know. Sometimes uh, we shouldn't limit their creativity. Saya tak pasti kalau saya masih hidup lagi 20 tahun. <laughs> Tapi ya, insyaAllah, uh, doa yang baik-baik. Of course lah. Siapa tak nak kita punya bidang berterusan? Sebab kita saya fikir generasi yang akan datang. You know, I'm I'm 46 years old already. My my students now, my uh, whatever new generations now is uh, yang akan replace kita. You know, the youth has to learn when the when the going gets tough and they have to fight for their rights. Um, yeah, they need to come out lah. Yeah, they need to come out and fight for it, you know, because nobody is going to help them on, on, on that front. We need the younger generation to take over, to be honest. The younger ones should take over. I'm not afraid to say that because it's their future. We should accept that and there must be a change. And, you know, having the younger generation, I'm learning a lot from them. It's a very different world now. And I think the younger generation should come out and be our leaders. 
and show us what they can do, you know, to change, to, to make a better Malaysia. Alright, my name is Desmond. I'm Kwan. I'm Nabil. I'm Jimun. Uh, so together we are Raising Entertainment, uh, so we are uh, content creators. So we've been doing it for two years, so you can like catch our videos on like, YouTube and Facebook. Uh. Right, one thing that we all have in common right, is that we enjoy creating, like, we also enjoy entertaining people. Think, so, but then so. as time goes on, and then as we got like more views and more feedback, kind of became like a... Like we, had to, we really enjoy doing this, uh, see, making people have smile on their faces, you know. And then we also have like comments like... And even messages saying that they are very stressed going through depression but then watching our videos <laughs> kind of like brought brought like yeah. I mean brought smile to their faces and then we also like wow we all like four four idiots like that like, wow we actually managed to how do yeah. like, so unite brighten someone's together. day yeah. yeah and then it's mostly to that uh, we kind of, we enjoy like putting smiles smiles on people's faces and also just you know uniting people through our comedy la. as that's why you see like our comedy is like uh, we try to incorporate all languages like Malay, Chinese, Indian, even some Tamil inside also. So we just want to make like a platform where all Malaysians can come, unite, enjoy lah. So there's no like there's no like oh yes. only Malay can enjoy, only yes. Chinese can enjoy, only Indian can enjoy. We want only Malaysian like Malaysians can enjoy. So that's that's our mission lah, to create a con like content where it's a safe haven for all Malaysians. Lah. The main thing we want okay, to show is like through embracing, but showing our flaws, embracing yeah. our flaws, right? We understand each other better. That way, there's less quarrels, yes. and you know, like nowadays, Malaysia, how, right? <laughs> so that's, in a way, that's also our indirect mission, also, like, stop the fighting. Oh, nice. uh, like the challenge, the biggest struggles are the audience, and also the biggest motivation is also the audience. Yes. Yeah, their comments, yeah, their I love positive the message the are, the, are the best thing, yeah, yeah. When you're reading it, it's like people from uh, another races commenting about uh, a good thing about other races. Quite a bit like. And then the upside of it also is like Malaysia has like a lot of stories we can make. You know, like we have different cultures, you know, Indians, Malays, Chinese, there's a lot of oh, stories from so like socially or culturally we can take to make a video also. So that's one of the, the other side of it also. Like. Yeah. We're very proud to I'm Malaysia. sure we can make a changes like yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are certain, I mean, for like micro, like macro, like the bigger level, of course, probably through our videos maybe not actually, but you know like if we can like convince like one individual to like instead of like ah maybe I should get out of my bubble maybe I should make more Chinese friends, Indian friends like for us it's like mission success really you know My name is Shailaja and I am 13 years old When I was 7 I founded a tea company so when I was seven, my school organized the bazaar and they encouraged all the kids to take up a booth and sell anything they wanted. So I asked my mom what, um, what I should sell and we thought about it for a while and I finally said, um, what about that tea you make me when I used to get sick when I was little? Um, maybe we should sell that. And on the day of the bazaar, we sold out all 100 jars in four hours and that was where Bloom started. I also, when I was eight, I founded a charity organization for kids by kids called Little Hands Big Hearts. And we have done a lot of things in the past. So we've, we've gone to refugee teaching centers and also gone to like centers for people who are blind and basically um, given them aid. And so we try to do as many things for families, um, under, um, underprivileged families with children as we can. So Little Hands Big Hearts is something that I relate to a lot because I've always wanted to help people in any way that I can. So being given the opportunity to start Little Hands Big Hearts was a great platform for me to get other kids my age to kind of get into this as well um, and pay it forward and help others. <laughs> my, um, my dream job is, um, well I have a few actually. Um, so when I recently started writing, I didn't actually think that I was going to end up, you know, wanting to publish my book. In the beginning, it was just something that I could, um, I could write and then maybe look back on in the future. But as I, like, as the book developed, I started to realize more and more that this is actually something that I love to do because um, I've always, always loved to read. So 
writing was just a way for me to, a creative output um, where all my input comes from reading. I believe that the younger generation will be able to, to change the world, to change Malaysia at least. And um, you can see in some of the, you know, um, countries where they have new leaders, new mindset and all. And yeah, it's just, we need to change. That's all. In, in the future coming, I hope Malaysian um, soaring high in regardless of local or international platform. And of course, being educated. Saya harap whatever things yang saya didik lorang daripada kecil sampai ke besar in terms of uh, humanity ya, eh, mula-mula uh, itu very important itu semua manusia kena ada sifat kemanusiaan baik uh, ikhlas be humble uh, itu saya nak anak-anak saya ada dulu well i have to like i say i am super proud to be a malaysian it being you know being a creative person especially it, it's even better to be a malaysian multiracial, multicultural and all kinds of flavor which help us to be inspired and and also be more creative and at the same time very caring because we care for each other feelings. We care for each other, you know, we 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 respect each other religion. I think that's the value which we have learned since young. Being an Indian myself, my my immediate neighbor on my left and right we had a Chinese family on the left and we had a Malay family on the right. And, uh, you know, being someone who is always actively uh, and full of life, I used to spend a lot of time with my neighbours. You know, so you know your neighbour, you know, you go play badminton with the, with the, with another neighbour down the road, you know, if your parents can't find me because I'm in someone else's house, you know, uh, they just got a new Nintendo, so I'm playing games there, you know, so I, I, I had that sort of up, upbringing. Di sinilah tempat saya uh, berkarya dan saya membina keluarga dan saya membina ekonomi saya. Even though like, yeah, like that, that's because we disagree with like, maybe certain things how our country is run, but it doesn't change the fact that we are still Malaysians. I still love my country. I mean, we were born and raised here. Yeah, so I think right, small yeah. little steps everybody can do. Small little steps add together will become a big, big step. And 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 I do see the you know, the, the chance of us being a better Malaysia. I'm not saying that we are bad, but I'm saying that it could be a lot better. Um, and I believe we can, because I know Malaysians have a lot of uh, love for each other. Yeah, bercakap pada persoalan tentang um, to be a Malaysian, uh, saya sangat bangga dengan, dengan, dengan jadi rakyat Malaysia lah. Uh, tapi perlu penambah baik eh walaupun dalam bidang animasi ni kita ada nampak usaha untuk daripada kerajaan tu sendiri but you cannot just depend 100% with uh, with the grants or whatever and so on um, and lepas tu kita as a creative people kita develop kita punya industri berpandukan pada corak budaya kita sendiri kita jangan terlalu terlalu, terlalu mengikut orang you know, kita terlalu mengikut 100% daripada barat atau 100% daripada Japan you know, we have to combine it to be Originality. That's that's what my 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 main point is now. Looking for originality and uniqueness of my industry. Sebabnya pasar raya Malaysia ni kita ni perpaduan kita kuat. Macam saya cakap lah, kan? You tak ada duit, tak ada makan, you telefon member je, member boleh bantu. Tu the best. Tolong, you know. Simple mantra that is 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 available all across the world, which is. You be good to people, people be good to you. So I think Malaysia is definitely a very warm country, not the climate. I'm talking about the people. The people are very warm. I'm definitely proud to be a Malaysian. Like I said earlier, um, anything you do in Malaysia, uh, you have to, like I say, comply to the different cultural backgrounds that you grew up in. And because you, you, you do that, you're able to adapt very well wherever you go. So, you're actually very globally ready when you're a Malaysian. <laughs> uh, compared to other countries where they only have like 
probably one or two main races and things like that. So we are so adaptable to anyone and every religion. We respect everyone. We know our boundaries, so we res we know that and we respect that. And it's not something that we really have to like. Oh, you are like that. So like we don't really think about it. It becomes so naturally. So when we go overseas and things like that, it it's not something strange to us. Very easy to see if you're overseas. See how somebody reacts or talks or. Hey, you Malaysian? Ah? Hey, bro! Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then, then you start talking Malay, right? You all, suddenly, you just start talking Malay, right? Suddenly, like, yeah, right? Ah, that's, that's what happens, right? Yeah. And especially during open house, you see different, different uh, race of people meeting together. And it's something that I'm really proud of. And you cannot see this in any other country. And also the people. The people are amazing here. And they're all really nice. And um, I am very, very social. So. Uh, wherever I go, I always like to talk to anyone. The first person I see, I will go talk to. Um, and the people here are really nice and they always entertain conversation. And yeah, so that's one of the things I really like about Malaysia. And then also, yeah, la, what makes for me, what makes a country is the people. So la, I love I love Malaysians around, you know. Like, I always say that like, Malaysia is like a buffet, you know. What point you want to take rice every day? You need go la, take like, kway teow ke, go la, take like, nasi lemak ke. You know, it's like you have all these like uh, cultures. And then why don't you want to learn about, and why don't you want to like, you know, get to know the cultures. It's like a bit of a waste la, if you have like all these cultures yet you don't want to mix. Party in a party without people. Right, you know, and uh, it needs a good mix of people, you know. So, you know, even like during our uh, last time when I was trying to do a, a organize a club night, um, if you get one type of person, it's not going to be a party. You have to have a weird mix. You got to get the models, you got to get the weirdo, you got to get, you know, a bunch of people, you got to get a weird mix, then it's a party, right? They can be said the same, uh, you know, about Malaysians, you know. We're an extremely weird and wonderful bunch. I definitely love Malaysia. I'm proud to be a Malaysian. And being a Malaysian is something that I will never give up. And I believe that I will not give up on my country too. Because to be honest, my country has never given up on me. Yes, of course, of course. I'm always been, I have always been and always will be proud to be a Malaysian. The culture here has influenced me so much. And being able to go to another country and saying that I am a Malaysian and I've lived there for so many years, um, it makes me feel proud. And um, yeah, so that's definitely something that I will keep with me for a, a very long time. This is Malaysia, my home, my turf, my earth, my goal, my roof, my space, my heights, my depth, you complement my soul. This is Malaysia. Thank you.